Hi everyone. In this video, I will show you a fun science lab called Unknown Substances. You probably already have most of the substances at home. I'll show the names of the substances at the end of this video. It's okay if you know the names ahead of time, but I think it's more fun if you don't know. Let's get started. first thing is to label the containers. And I do two sets, even three. One for the dish that I work out of. And I put one on the tray where the area is I work. I also put a third set on the actual substances. And notice there's spoons in each container because I don't want to contaminate each substance. I want to keep that very pure. It's the hardest thing to do for students. Then I'll put a little bit in each area for testing. And again, they might guess these substances, but I always tell them they could be poison. In fact, one, I think, is poison. So please do not eat. And the first test is the looking test. A microscope would be cool, but uh, these hand lenses work fine. And then on a worksheet, we will write what we see, try to draw a picture. The worksheets can be downloaded to record the information on a data sheet. And A and B are crystallized, kind of different than C and D. C and D are very smooth. I have the students draw a picture on their worksheet and it's hard to draw a picture of a smooth so I tell them use a shape like a circle. For the crystals I would make one a triangle and one a square. And the second test is the acid test and for the acid we use vinegar. It's a mild acid. and a few drops on each and do the same as the magnification test. Do a little bit of each and then record what you see on your data sheet. No color change. The crystals kind of melt. I can mix it a little bit. And not real dramatic, but try to find some differences with each powder because the object here is later we're going to mix two together and then through your testing you have to figure out what the two substances or three are. And not much difference it kind of melts a little more slowly.
And you can use toothpicks instead of Q-tips. Q-tips were just handy and available. Now a fifth powder that you could use or substance would be like plaster, plaster of Paris or some from the art room. I didn't use that this time, but you can. The color is a little bit gray and when it dries, of course it hardens. So that's the trick. Because I do this in a one day lab, I don't use plaster of Paris because it takes 24 hours for it to dry. So you try to find a difference that you can tell when mixed what it is. So the next test, the third test we do, is an iodine test. And the iodine can be diluted a lot. You don't need a lot of iodine. And I just add water. I don't think I really needed to add. So no color change, just a little yellow, reddish yellow, and that's the color of the iodine. So no change. B seems to be the same, no change, the color of the iodine. Maybe a touch darker. If one wanted to note that, that would be good. And it appears to be the same color as the iodine, but a little darker. And again, the color of the iodine. And it looks similar to B. Substance D. Now that's different. It's black. If substances were mixed, I think the iodine test would point out if D was in that substance. So I mixed some together. And let's take a look at the three tests. I don't really see any crystals. There could be some if I took a real close look. 
I'd have to stir it around. It depends on how much, but I don't see any crystals, so maybe no A and no B. Let's do the acid test or vinegar. Oh, it bubbles. So I looked back on my data sheet in which substance bubbled like that. A, B, C, or D. I'd look at my data sheet to figure out. And one more test. The iodine test. So I guess we know substance D is in there, and it bubbled. So from the data sheet, I'm sure you could figure out substance C and D are mixed together. Now you can try it again and try to mix two different other substances. There's also a heat test and fire. I didn't do that for this lab, and I don't usually do it because unless you have a proper lab, it can be very dangerous because there's fire and an open flame. But I would test each one in a packet of aluminum foil I would make and hold it over a flame. And that one, substance A, stands out above all others because of the smell and the coloring. So, for classes, I like to bag it, pre-bag each substance for groups of three or four, and I'll give them a packet of A, B, and C, and D, and I'll pre-bag them because if they get their own, they can contaminate the substances, maybe use the same spoon and or accidentally contaminate them. But here are the substances. So I'm sure everyone guesses sugar. Um, I don't want them to know sugar because they want to eat it. That's the one I consider poison. Salt. Bubbling, baking soda and vinegar. And starch always turns black. So if you put iodine sample on potato chips or anything starch, it would turn black. Iodine is a test for starch. Here's the unknown substances data sheet, and we would fill it out like this. Substance A, B, C, and D, and the mixture later. Hand lens, what did we see under the hand lens? Students can draw shapes on the board and they might be different shapes. I like to settle for a triangle. Then B, also crystally similar, but more cube or square. And then C, really didn't have a shape. It's just drawing the powder. I like to use a circle. So I like to use a triangle, a cube, and a circle. And D is similar to C, not really having a shape. Then we tested the vinegar, and the vinegar really no change. Or maybe melted. These are sample words, and similar with B. No change or melted. C, 
see what happened. We saw lots of bubbles. And color, no change. We just say white. And D, no change. And white. Then we went to the iodine test. And this one, yellow. And B, also yellow. Remember, it was the color of the iodine, so really no change. You could even write no change. And C, very boring, still yellow or no change. And D, that was different. That was black. So we can see the chart here. And then we can mix some powders and check and go back to our test to see what happens to see what is, is inside. Heat test, we didn't do. I can tell you that A, does under fire in a foil will bubble and smell good. B, might pop, so safety goggles are neat, needed for this, but really no change, no color change. And really no change for C or no change for D. So really the keys here are the heat test here for the iodine test. This is a key and this is a key and the shapes. So you can see B, the shape is really a key indicator. For C, it bubbles with vinegar. For Powder D, it turns black with iodine. So each one has a characteristic. And A, bubbles and smells good and tastes good too. But we don't taste. Anyway, the sheet is downloadable on my website. I hope you learned something helpful in this video. Give it a try. Please hit like and subscribe if you did. See you next time.